when we look at the book of Revelation, chapter 20, the thousand year reign of Christ, we have to be consistent in our hermeneutic. If you ask people, do you believe the 1,260 days are literal? Yes. Do you believe the 1,290 days are literal? Yes. So you believe the three and a half lunar years are literal? Yes. You believe the other time periods stated in the book of Revelation are literal? Yes. Well, on what exegetical basis or hermeneutical basis can you make the thousand year different? You cannot spiritualize one and take another to be literal. There is no reason, looking at the text in context, not to take it as literal. There's also, again, we're not basing doctrine on this, but the ancient Jewish belief was the earth would stand for 6,000 years. 2,000 years without the Torah, 2,000 years with the Torah, 2,000 years with the Messiah, and then something else would happen. The age uh, that, that Christians would call the millennium. Now, of course, this is a powerful polemic in arguing that the Messiah had to come 2,000 years ago, his name being Jesus. Nonetheless, it was rooted in the Jewish thought of, of, of the ancient world. But we see it in the book of Revelation quite clearly. You cannot take some of the time periods as literal and decide to make another one automatically figurative with no particular reason. Uh, this is essentially where, where the case for taking a literal thousand years comes from, Revelation chapter 20. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book, and the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.